Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving two exponential equations. 5 to the power x plus 12 to the power x equals 13 to the power x and 3 to the power x plus 4 to the power x equals 7 to the power x. At this point, you probably guess what a possible solution would be like, but we're going to solve these two equations separately. We're going to look at the graph and then we're going to talk about other solutions if there are any. Okay, let's proceed with the first equation. We have 5 to the power x plus 12 to the power x equals 13 to the power x. If you've ever done geometry and especially used Pythagorean theorem, you must be familiar with something like this. So at this point, you could probably tell that if x is equal to 2, then we're going to get a solution. Why? Because 5, 12, 13 would be the legs of a right triangle whose hypotenuse is 13. So we know that 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. But is it quite possible that any other power of 5 and 12 when added is going to give us a power of 13 with the same exponent? So let's go ahead and explore. Now, we're going to, in order to um, look at, take a look at this equation, we're going to modify a little bit. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 13 to the power x. I want to make it easier to handle. And let's go ahead and separate them like this. 5, to, five, five over 13 to the power x plus 12 over 13 to the power x, and that equals 1. Now, it's good to have 1 on the right-hand side and fractions on the left-hand side. Now, take a look at this equation. We know that x equals 2 is a possible solution. So x equals 2 is, uh, satisfies this equation. We know for sure that, right? We can just plug it in. And you can verify that here as well, uh, that 25 over 169 plus 144 over 169 equals 169 over 169, which is equal to 1. Okay. Now, how can we show if there are any other solutions or how can we find other solutions or show that there are no other solutions? So here's what we're going to look at. What if x is greater than 2, right? If x is greater than 2, then you're going to find uh, that 5 over 13 to the power x is going to be... Now, here's what happens. You have a fraction that's less than 1. When you raise it to higher and higher powers the number is going to get smaller because you're going to multiply 513 by 513 and 513, so 513 is obviously less than 513. So when you raise it to the second power, it is going to be, uh, it is going to be less than the number itself. So what is that supposed to mean? It means that if x is greater than 2, like, let's say you raise this to the third power, then it's obviously going to be less than 5 over 13 squared because as you increase the powers, the numbers get smaller. Now, the same thing happens to the other number. So this is also going to be less than its second power because x is greater than 2. So now we add these two equations side by, I mean inequality, side by side, and we get 5 over 13 to the power x plus 12 over 13 to the power x is less than uh, 25 over 169 plus 144 over 169. And we know that this equals 1, right? So we kind of got something like we know that this equals 1 from our equation, so we got something like 1 is less than 1, which is a contradiction. So this is problematic. This means that there are no solutions, no solutions for x is greater than 2. Okay, in the same manner, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens if x is less than 2. Now, if x is less than 2, we're going to get something similar. Obviously, you're talking about raising this number, and in this case, of course, I want to stick with the positive powers, but that doesn't really matter much because we're basically looking for solutions around the 2, so I'm going to stay as close as possible to 2, okay? So if, five, uh, if x is less than 2, then 5 over 13 to the power x is going to be greater than 5 over 13 squared, and similarly, 12 over 13 to the power x is going to be greater than 12 over 13 to the second power. Why? Because if you reduce the power, then the numbers will get larger. And obviously, when you use negative powers, what's going to happen? For example, if you use x equals negative 1 or x equals 0, at x equals 0, you're going to get 1. And if x, uh, 1 plus 1 is going to be 2, obviously, much larger than two, 1. Or if x is negative 1, you're going to get improper fractions, and their sum is definitely going to be greater than 1, because each fraction is going to be greater than 1. Make sense? Okay, hopefully it does now. We're going to add similarly and this is going to give us 1, right? This is obviously the sum of these two numbers we know that is 1. But here, we know that this sum needs to equal 1. So we got another contradiction. So no solutions from either. 
from here either. So what is that supposed to mean? We don't have any solutions if x is less than 2. We don't have any solutions if x is greater than 2. Therefore, the only solution is obtained at x equals 2. So this equation has a single solution, and that is x equals 2. All right, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this function. And the function I'm talking about here is y equals 5 to the power x plus 12 to the power x minus 13 to the power x. As you know, this equation is, has a solution for if you set it equal to 0, we know that x equals 2 is a solution. And that seems to be the only solution because this graph has only one x-intercept. If x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 0. It has a maximum somewhere here, and then it's just going to uh, decrease uh, forever. All right, so we got one solution from here, and it's verified by the graph as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at our second equation. Our second equation is pretty similar to this, but you might even guess this, uh, even if you don't uh, know Pythagorean theorem. And you guessed it right if you said x equals 1, right? Because 3 plus 4 equals 7. Great. So this gives us that x equals 1 is a solution. How can we find other solutions? Or if there are no other solutions, how can we prove that there are no other solutions? We're going to use the similar approach. That's actually one of the reasons why I put these two equations together so that uh, you can kind of compare and contrast because their powers are different, but the idea is pretty much the same. And I'm also going to sh show you the graph of this. You can also make a comparison between the two graphs. Okay, let's go ahead and proceed with the solution. I'm going to divide both sides by 7 to the power x, like before. That's going to give me 1 on the right-hand side. Great. So then we're going to do the usual separation. 3 over 7 to the power x plus 4 over 7 to the power x equals 1. Okay, great. I can also approach this problem from a different standpoint instead of just looking at greater than and less than and so on and so forth. Anyways, I'm going to talk about both briefly. So in this case, we know that x equals 1 is a solution, but can we prove that there are no other solutions for x is greater than 1, for example? Now, what happens is, again, we have two fractions. If x becomes greater, the exponent becomes greater. So you're going to find that the result is going to be less than 3 over 7. And the same thing is true for 4 over 7. If you raise it to higher power like 2, 3, 4, 5, the result is going to be less than 4 sevenths because the number gets smaller and smaller. As x approaches infinity, you know something interesting is going to happen here. Anyways, when we add these two up, we're going to get this sum like before. And then this is less than 1, but this is given as 1. So 1 is less than 1 makes no sense. And for x is less than 1, you're going to find something similar. Let me just tell you that instead of doing it completely because you are going to get something like this. And as you know, this is impossible as well. So that means that x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. We have y equals 3 to the power x plus 4 to the power x minus 7 to the power x. As you know, this equation, when set it equal to 0, it has one solution at x equals 1. And that seems to be the only x-intercept. Again, this function makes a maximum between 0 and 1 like the other one. Pretty much behaves the same way probably slightly different you know curve obviously because of the numbers but the idea is pretty similar now let me go back go back here and tell you something else just additional information here well if you look at these two functions this is a decreasing function and this is a decreasing function right because as you know if the base is less than uh, what's it called less than one between zero and one then you got an exponential function that is decreasing, right? As x approaches infinity, y approaches 0, so on and so forth. So you have two decreasing functions. Their sum is also decreasing. Therefore, if you have a decreasing function, it is only going to have, it's only going to have, uh, you know, a single solution, right? And that is going to be at 1, because it, it's only going to intersect y equals 1 at one point, since it's constantly decreasing, it's going to go like this, and we're going to have a single solution. Therefore, this brings us so the only solutions that are, for the first one, we have x equals, let me go ahead and write it this way. Okay, so the first equation has the only solution x equals 2. The second one only has one solution x equals 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.